Hello and a warm welcome to all my children watching this video. Today we are going to talk about our neighbors own nahi nahi bagal wale sharma ji nahi. We are going to learn about the neighbors of our planet earth in space. Yes, you heard it right. We are going to learn about all the planets who surround our planet and are together in the solar system. Solar system. Yes, the sun along with the other eight friends make our solar system. And as we can see by looking at this picture, it is one amazing world. Sun. So, the center of our solar system, the sun. Children, sun is not taken as a planet. It's a star, a big ball of fire and all the planets revolve around it. It's the head of the solar system and it's in the center, a huge source of energy. Next is a, the planet which is closest to sun and that is mercury which is also the smallest planet of the solar system followed by it we have the brightest planet called as venus which is second nearest to the sun and here comes our planet earth earth is the third planet from the sun and as we know it's the only planet which supports life known as the blue planet as 70 percent of its surface is covered with water only planet where water exists in its liquid form and then who do we have yes our very own red planet or the mars the fourth planet from the sun and then after mars we have the biggest planet of the solar system that is our jupiter fifth planet from the sun and the largest planet as i told you and then we can have our planet, the Lord of the Rings, Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet and the second largest planet after Jupiter. It has a system of rings around it. And then we have Uranus. And Uranus is the seventh planet and the coldest planet in the solar system. And after Uranus, we can see the next planet planet called as Neptune. Neptune is the eighth and the farthest planet from the sun. Now it's time for us to see the natural satellite of earth that is moon. Moon does not have its own light but it shines with the by reflecting back the light received from sun. Can you see the surface of moon in this picture? It is not at all smooth. It is filled up with craters. Before we move forward, let us understand some of the basic terms. The first one is the axis. An imaginary line. Children, it is purely imaginary. An imaginary line runs through the center of the earth and give, it gives us the two poles which is the north and the south pole. The earth's axis is known to run from the north pole to the south pole. Now there is one more imaginary line but it is through the center and this imaginary line is believed to divide earth into two hemispheres. The northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. As you can see in this picture on the right, there is a line and children once again I'll tell you it is purely imaginary. Now let's understand the two types of movement shown by our planet earth. The first one is rotation. Children rotation is when earth stands on its own axis and rotates itself. It is as if that kind of a movement as rotation and it is responsible for the day and night. And what is revolution? When the earth moves around the sun in a fixed path called as orbit and taking 365 days, that is called as revolution. During this revolution, half of the earth is near the sun and half is away from it. The hemisphere near to the sun, since it receives direct sunlight, experiences a summer and whereas the other hemisphere experiences a winter. Other than these two seasons, we experience autumn and spring also. Now do you remember the line imaginary one equator? Yes, the area near the equator, since it receives sunlight throughout the year, 
it experiences a warm climate through the entire year and where is at the poles it's six months of light and the other six months of darkness since it remains away from the sun here you can see an imaginary line running through the center of the earth and yes this line itself is called as the axis and because of this axis children we have one north pole and the other as the south pole now generally when we hold something in our hand we expect it to be straight but here your earth has a tilt a tilt of some degrees from the uh, main axis so this tilt see because of this tilt how the light is falling on one area and the other side is going into the dark so this tilt is also responsible for the different seasons you experience and then there is the center line called as equator which gives you the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere children this is just an attempt to make you understand that how earth behaves in space now let's see the two types of movements of our earth now the first one is rotation where the earth moves around its own axis here you can see the earth moving around its own axis taking 24 hours to complete one complete rotation now in this you can see that one area is having the sunlight and the other area or the other part of the earth is completely in dark this very well explains how we have a day and a night so in some parts of the world when it is day the other parts experience a night now the second movement children over here is the revolution the revolution of earth is around the sun during this revolution our earth also rotates on its own axis and completes this process now children there is a point in this revolution when earth is the farthest from the sun and this particular process of revolution or this movement of revolution takes our earth 365 and 1 by 4th days to complete it i guess that gives us an explanation of the whole one year the fixed path through which our earth travels to complete this one revolution around the sun is known as the orbit and because of this complete revolution we are able to experience four different kinds of seasons so children these are the two different types of movements displayed by our planet earth children now let's meet the most twinkling members of our neighborhood the stars the stars are huge ball of gases which gives out heat and light energy and when they are together in a group they form a particular pattern and for this group of stars we call it as galaxy and the different patterns they form yes it is right we call it as a constellation for example the ursa major constellation before you wind up this video children quickly you can go through all the points written over here as a recap hope you had a lot of fun meeting all our neighbors in space